Hey y'all, before we get started today, I just want to say that Princess Weeks made an amazing video about the Princess and the Frog a year ago, and I highly do recommend giving it a watch. I will have it linked down below. All right, now let's get into it. The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of my Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started for PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway. Road video. So, The Princess and the Frog is a film that I have seen too many damn times. Therefore, I am qualified to make an unhinged breakdown of it. Now, before we can actually get into talking about the movie, you know, like what's actually in it. There is some background information that is important to bring up. Remember, if you have watched my Unhinged breakdowns before, this is not necessarily a deep dive. It's just me explaining this shit to you as if you have never seen it. But these two factors that I am about to speak about are crucial to the story of The Princess and the Frog because it has affected its overall outcome. First, we're going to talk about what Tiana was supposed to be before she became the Tiana we know her as today. As we know, the Disney company is very questionable when it comes to diversity. And when we found out that a black princess was supposed to be getting her own film, we found out her name was going to be Maddie and that she was going to be a maid. When Disney announced that it would make a film with a black heroine, we said, yay, it's about time. Since then, some of the company's decisions regarding Princess Tiana have been called into question and some minor tweaks and changes needed to be made. Concerns were voiced over the princess's original name, Maddie, which was thought to be an unlikely name for a black woman, as well as her occupation as a maid for a white family. To appease its customers, Disney changed her name to Tiana and placed her in the kitchen as the family chef. Now that's what we call affirmative action. Now, I specifically remember when I was little, I was in the hair salon and I was reading this shit in a magazine. So I knew her as Maddie. I was confused when I saw the trailer for the movie come out and they said her name was Tiana. Yeah, that wasn't necessarily the smartest move for Disney, especially with the given history of how Disney has treated black women within their films. That was a really, really bad move. And one thing a lot of people don't know, and this is how I know a lot of people don't know because y'all be trying to tell me this like I don't know it. Oh, I very much do. I watched a whole documentary on this woman. Princess Tiana is actually based on a real person. Her name is Leah Chase. And by the way, she's a civil rights activist, so yeah just throwing that out there and by the way a nice little fun fact leah's restaurant is still there in new orleans so if you're ever in town you might want to stop by over there that's like actually a tourist attraction and since we have gotten on the subject of new orleans that is the setting for this movie mainly if you're not familiar with black history in america specifically new orleans is a black ass town okay and fun fact this is something that a lot of people don't seem to get and this is why i say y'all really need to do your research the south of the united states is black as hell like yeah we have racist shit everywhere but there are certain parts where you get to down here and you will barely see any white people or so much of the culture down here is black as hell i'm sorry this is just a little rant but i get so fucking irritated when people act as if the north united states is like the safest and bestest place for black people to live in i'm like do y'all not realize that so much of black american history comes from the fucking south specifically the southeast united states but getting back to new orleans the movie takes place in 1920s new orleans and you know what that means you can't get away from this thing we have racism as it is still very much present in every city here in the fucking world especially in america 1920s new orleans it was like a different kind of racist the 1920s often called the warring 20s is synonymous with the jazz age and the harlem renaissance black musicians visual artists and writers were able to achieve great fame and notoriety for their work during this period Black students were establishing fraternities and sororities on college campuses. New organizations were formed to support Black Americans in the fight for equality. Black politicians were elected and the world of professional sports saw Black players making history. At the same time, Black communities were ravaged by riots and subjected to racism and discrimination in every way possible. And under the near constant threat of 
the highly active Ku Klux Klan and other hate groups that felt black Americans and white Americans could never be equal. Learn more about what black Americans experienced, accomplished, and overcame between 1920 and 1929. This movie focuses on the people that live in New Orleans, both black and white. But one thing that I enjoyed about this film is that it clearly showed us something that our American history books failed us. You know the era that comes after slavery has ended? They act as if shit was like sunshine and rainbows in between that time period between then and the civil rights movement. And absolutely fucking not. All the bad shit that happened during this time period is what led up to the civil rights movement. I hate how y'all are trying to act as if everything was fine during that time period, but then everything got bad again during civil rights and then that's when that shit happened. As much as people try to say that The Princess and the Frog isn't really about race, it is. You cannot tell a story that takes place in 1920s America without race being involved because, especially at this time period, being a black person affected nearly everything in Tiana's life. On top of the fact that Tiana is a dark-skinned black woman. And now that you actually have the background on The Princess and the Frog, let's actually talk about the fucking movie now. All right, sit down. We about to get started. But before we go into the entire breakdown of this damn movie, here's what you need to know when I do this. If you're expecting me to sit here and give you a rundown of the entire fucking film, I don't do that over here on this channel. Y'all be expecting us now to sit here and go through everything detail by detail by detail. And I personally just don't want to do that. If you want that, go to the Disney Wiki go over there we're not doing that here here i am about to give you guys a breakdown of the film as if you've never seen it before if you've seen the princess and the frog and i'm pretty sure that's like almost everybody that's black watching this video hey but if you haven't you yeah let's go ahead and get into it all right so the first thing we have here so far we are talking about the HBIC of The Princess and the Frog. In my personal opinion, she's the HBIC of the Disney Princess because she has a very distinctive personality and the last ones that have come out after the year 2000. Yeah, Disney has a big issue when it comes to personalities now with their princesses and Tiana got lucky. Love that for her. But yeah, she is the HBIC. But how is she the HBIC? She loves to cook. The entire purpose of Tiana's character is that she wants to be a chef, she wants to open her own restaurant, but why? Now, one thing I have noticed in this movie is that people kept saying that, Tiana, why do you want to have your own restaurant so bad? Why are you constantly overworking yourself? It's not realistic. And in this day and age, if a black woman wants to open up her own damn restaurant, she has a better chance of doing so versus back here in the past. Now that I sat and, you know, understood a lot more about U.S. history, especially how the South treated Black people as a whole. By the way, I'm so tired of y'all acting like the North isn't fucking racist. This most definitely fucking is. Same as the Midwest. And y'all are going to talk about racism in the South. I'm going to need y'all to talk about it for the entire United States. But I most definitely understand why everybody was like, Tiana, we know you want you to get your own restaurant, but we live in a very racist ass fucking society. Do you think? Do you think? Do you think? And we're going to get to that point next. But yeah, she loves to cook. But where does Tiana's love for cooking come from? Well, her parents. Her mom's name is Eudora and her dad's name is James. Fun fact, James and Lucius from Empire, like Lucius Lyon, share the same fucking actor. Like, huh? I'm gonna be honest. Terrence Howard, who played James, he would make a bomb Dr. Facilier in that live action Princess and the Frog movie that they are making that I personally am not too excited for. But moving forward, this is where her love for cooking comes from. More so with her father, James, because that is how she bonded with him. But also, for those of you guys who don't know, James ended up being sent off to the war. 
and this takes place in like the early 1900s in America. We pretty sure what this war is and he unfortunately didn't make it out. And because of that and how devastated Tiana and her mother were, Tiana has dedicated her life to her father. That is so much of where her love for cooking comes from because it was a way that she bonded with her dad. But she feels as if getting this restaurant for herself will help her feel more connected with him, but also giving him something that he was never able to have. One thing about Tiana is that she's gonna sit here and follow her dreams. Her mom is just like, Tiana girl, what, what's going on? But she loves her daughter, she appreciates her, but she's also very worried of her because one thing a lot of people don't seem to realize when it comes to Tiana is that she works so fucking hard. She is literally one of the most hardest working princesses I say. I throw her up there with Mulan too. Ma'am was working her ass off. Tiana works super duper hard, not mainly because she has to, but it's because she wants to. She so desperately has revolved so much of her time and dedication to getting this damn restaurant. And it has gotten to the point where she is a workaholic. And I most definitely can relate to her on that part right there. She has no social life. All she fucking do is work. She work day and night. And yeah, because of that, we see how it was emotionally taxing on her. We see how taxing it is on her physically because homegirl was pass the fuck out in the beginning of the movie when she finished her night shift but yeah that is pretty much the basis of tiana's character for what you need to know about her in the beginning she's the disney princess with the best outfits now that we have gotten all of this out of the way we need to move forward with tiana's best friend and i have a lot of strong opinions about this one character right here more so because fandom is responsible for this it's y'all fault why she kind of irritates me but i still love her and by the way as i wait Another thing that people call Tiana is Tia. That was her nickname. Now we are talking about Charlotte, who basically is Tiana's best friend. For those of you guys who don't know, Tiana does have friends in this movie that we barely see, by the way, and they are black. But like her bestest friend, her bestie, is a rich white girl. <laughs> okay, we're gonna... <laughs> you know what, Turb, say my words for me right now. Please do it. This was Disney's way of telling us that not all the white people in 1920s America were racist, but a lot of them were because if you didn't know, Tiana does have to deal with two racist white men in the movie. Hi everyone, as I am currently editing this video, this is something I said that I wanted to elaborate a little bit more on and let's get into it. I am in no way, shape or form saying that it is a bad thing that Tiana's best friend is a white woman. It's not necessarily like uncommon for black people to be friends with people who are non-black. I have tons of non-black friends. Literally one of my best friends is an Australian white man. I'm not even fucking joking when I say that. Black people and white people could be friends. I'm not sitting here complaining about that factor there. But why I brought it up is because thinking like at the time period that this shit is set in and just knowing how America is in general, I'm not saying that it's uncommon for black women and white women to be friends at this time period. We've seen it, documented, whatever. I'm not saying that that is unrealistic, but I'm saying that Lottie's character was pushed towards the front so much for this film is because Disney is constantly always trying to find different ways to how they can cater to everybody. They're constantly wanting to cater to a wider demographic because this was a point that I had brought up when I was like watching Princess Week's video and it just came across my mind like Lottie's main purpose in this movie was solely to get white people to care to get white people to watch it and I always think about that thing Issa Rae had said when she was talking about making Insecure and she was thinking about adding a white character in the series and pushing them more towards the front because she felt as if that will get white people to care. And personally, I do think this worked because there are a lot of white people that love the princess and the frog. And I'm not sitting here saying that a lot of white people love the princess and the frog and they only watch this shit because Lottie was in it. But plenty of them did. Seeing the behaviors of fandom towards this one particular character has shown a lot of people's true colors with how they feel with this movie. I just find it extremely interesting yet frustrating how we finally get a movie about a black 
princess. This is the first black animated Disney princess film. The movie stars a black woman and she has to share the spotlight with so many different people but also a white woman who is wealthy, well off, spoiled, privilege and then we just see her over here struggling listen i i love this movie i love tiana down but there's just so much that frustrates me with what went into making this film and it honestly just makes me sit and think about how if disney should have just put this in modern day they put it in 1920s and they were like you know what it's more modern than our other princess films it may work, it may not, but it's just race plays such a big ass factor with this fucking movie. And it's just something that I can't not see when it comes to it. All right, I'll shut up. I ran for like three minutes. Let's get back into the video. Yeah, for the most part, Charlotte is just a spoiled rich woman, but she's a very likable spoiled rich woman, if that makes sense. She is the type of character that we kind of hate when we look at it in other media outside of Disney. She is a character I would say will fall perfectly in Gossip Girl. I'm not even being funny when I say that. I most definitely can see her being in there. But for the most part, Charlotte is Tiana's best friend. Tiana calls her Lottie. Charlotte calls her Tia. So Tia and Lottie, I personally think their friendship is super duper cute. And I also really like how Charlotte is super protective of Tiana just as well. I personally do think that Charlotte is a great friend to Tiana. I will, but part of the reason why I got so irritated with Charlotte's character in the most recent years is because I realized that so many people in white fandom were directing so much of their attention to Charlotte's character and acting as if this was her movie and it wasn't Tiana's. I was like, hold on, Charlotte Gray, we can give her her praise, but remember, Tiana's the HBIC of this film. While Charlotte may be the HBIC of New Orleans, the movie is still Tiana's. She's still the HBIC of everything here at the end of the day. And then also at the end of the movie, I personally think that Tiana is the HBIC of New Orleans because her restaurant was popping. Everybody was having a good ass time. It was loud as fucking there. It was like going to the club. But anyways, now how is Charlotte so rich? Her father is Big Daddy. That's what everybody refers to him as. Like I said, he's not that much different from his daughter. Just a nice rich rich white person that is in this black ass city. <laughs> now I'm gonna be completely honest, the Princess and the Frog makes it a bit confusing how Lottie and her dad are so rich because it's one of those moments where you have to be paying close attention to understand how they got all this damn money. But yeah, his name is Eli. We just refer to him as Big Daddy and he is so rich because he is a sugar baron. Okay, short, cute little history lesson. It's not just with the city of New Orleans, but just Louisiana as a whole. When it came to what each state contributed to society, sugar was one of the major things that Louisiana brought. This isn't necessarily a surprise because when it comes to Louisiana culture, people often talk about the desserts. And this is something that's always kind of annoyed me when it came to the Princess and the Frog because Charlotte and her pappy, they're supposed to be seen as like good white people, nice white people, white people that weren't racist. But looking at U.S. history and knowing that New Orleans was a big crucial factor when it came to the fucking slave trade. The city of New Orleans was the largest slave market in the United States, ultimately serving as the site for the purchase and sale of more than 135,000 people. In 1805, Congress exercised its constitutional prerogative to end the legal importation of enslaved people from outside of the United States. But it did not end domestic slave trading, effectively creating a federal protective internal market for human beings. As Franklin stood in New Orleans, awaiting the arrival of the United States, filled with enslaved people sent from Virginia by his business partner, John Armfield, he aimed to get his share of that business. If you sit and think about it, a lot of these wealthy white men in the state of Louisiana as a whole, but especially in New Orleans, they own slaves. Them owning slaves is how they became so rich. The reason that so many slave masters was wealthy, by the way, for those of you guys who don't know, is because they were not fucking paying the slaves. They were keeping all of that money. They were doing free labor for literal chump change and scraps. 
The Princess and the Frog made it seem as if Big Daddy made his money ethically and he probably could. I'm not trying to sit here and say that that wasn't possible because there were a lot of places in the South United States or there were ones that hired black people and they hired, you know, paid them lower wages. But if somebody wants to jump to the conclusion that Big Daddy probably owned slaves or him and Charlotte come from slave masters, that there were people in their family that owned fucking slaves, they're not, you know, reaching because looking back at U.S. history and Princess and the Frog counts as historical fiction, they're not wrong. Disney, this is like my big issue with the company is that they try to Disneyfy everything. Like they try to make horrible situations look pretty. Because this is one thing I think a lot of people need to get through their fucking head when it comes to Princess Tiana. Princess Tiana, like me and many other African American women in films, we are descendants of slaves. That's how we fucking got over here. We don't know much of anything about Charlotte's mommy and let's be honest it just has that typical disney princess setup with what they did with charlotte and what they did with tiana because everybody sits here and talks about how in the when it comes to the disney princesses they always have somebody dying in their damn family and tiana's dad is the one that has passed but we don't know much of anything about charlotte's mom and it's not necessarily important because at the end of the day charlotte isn't the main character but we can conclude that one she most definitely passed because I want to sit here and think that Big Daddy and Charlotte's mother may be divorced, but also like thinking at the time period of when this shit came out, it wasn't necessarily normal for women to be divorcing their husbands. So I will be like, no, even if he was being a fucking dickhead, she would stay with him because that man rich, he got money. Either Charlotte's parents are still together and we just never saw her mother or they, the woman died, I'm sorry. <laughs> the woman died, that's literally it. It's either those two things. We never saw her mother or she just did. But yeah, for the most part, I'd say that Charlotte is way more important than her dad in the film. <laughs> oh my God, that sounds so frustrating. But Charlotte basically has your typical Disney princess setup. When you look at her, she comes from wealth. She has this super duper cute bedroom. Like I was sitting there and actually looking at all the details that went into her room. And listen, y'all get on my nerves when y'all be sitting here talking about y'all running out of shit to say about this. Like when we noticed that there was corn in the table and in Kanto that Dolores was sitting by the corn, y'all were over here like, y'all run out of shit to say about the movie. And I'm like, no, like, I think it's important that those small details are in there and they're noticeable because I was sitting there and looking at everything that went into Charlotte's bedroom and it was super duper gorgeous, but also it was important to the story because you want to know why? Toys are fucking expensive. That shit costs a lot, especially with how big her room was and everything like that. They made it very clear from the jump that she had money, but also it's so funny because she has the typical princess setup. She has the big pink ass room, has a lot of materials things even in the beginning of the film when we see the flashback scene of her and Tiana when they were little she is wearing this big ass poofy princess type dress every time we see Charlotte in this film she is presented to be as a princess but at the end of the day she technically isn't a real princess she's just a rich girl in New Orleans therefore she kind of gets princess treatment so when people sit here and say Charlotte is a princess they aren't technically wrong but guess what I think she counts as a princess. She may not be in the official Disney princess lineup, but we can throw Charlotte in there too because I personally say Megara is a Disney princess just as well. But for the most part, I like Charlotte. Fandom got irritated with her because they was trying to act like that the Princess and the Frog was her movie and it wasn't. Y'all, Charlotte, HBIC of New Orleans. She loud as hell, by the way. She loud as hell. Y'all think I'm loud? Charlotte is loud. Her ass be screaming all the time. Like, I've been reading that Princess and the Frog novel, the one if, if like Tiana actually made the deal with Dr. Facilier, we're gonna get into his bitch ass in a minute. And she is always fucking screaming. Like, she's so damn loud. And I know I'm loud as hell, but I was like, Charlotte, we need, we need to bring it down about the more notches. All right, let's move on to the next person. Ooh, now we're gonna get into my favorite part. We're gonna be talking about Tiana husband. He's super fun. He tall, he got blonde hair. What do you mean I have to go talk about the other one? I do. Fine. All right, so uh, I just got word on the street that we have to talk about Tiana's first husband. We can't talk about the second one because he wasn't in the film. So yeah. Um, 
<laughs> this nigga. <laughs> Listen, my opinions have changed on the Veen so much because I was so young when the film came out and revisiting this movie every year since it has came out i have come to the realization that he wasn't that great like he's actually really terrible he's unemployed they really put tiana with a broke nigga we need to have a word we most definitely need to have a word because naveen is a spoiled brat charlotte is a spoiled brat but it's different with him because even though Charlotte is spoiled, I wouldn't necessarily call her a brat. She wasn't bratty in my opinion. She had like little bratty moments, but I think Charlotte was genuinely a nice person. Naveen was a fucking bitch. Like he was not, he was a, he was literally a spoiled brat. And the main reason that he came to New Orleans because he's a prince from some island that we all know about called Maldonia. They made this shit up for this. He's a prince. His parents cut his ass off. They were like, no, you are very irresponsible. You ain't shit. So guess what? We're cutting your funding. We're cutting your source of income. You need to go find a job. All right. I don't know what Naveen does. Instead of him trying to go and find a job, his lazy ass goes and makes a deal with Dr. Facilier, who is the shadow man. And that is how he ends up getting turned into a frog. You know what? I'm gonna bring Emma in to talk about Naveen for a few minutes and then I'm gonna come back because he makes me so mad now because I can't believe I used to love him growing up but now that I'm grown and I sit here and I think back to him I'm like oh baby no he was just pretty he was just a very handsome dude no Hi guys, this is Ella Pastor here, and Harry asked me to come on here and tell you guys why, in my personal opinion, I feel like Prince Naveen was not it, and how he was not the ideal partner for Tiana. So when I was a kid and watched this movie, Prince Naveen always gave me the ick, but I did not have like the mental capacity to understand why. But now that I'm an adult and I rewatched the movie, I understood why Kid Me always gave that man the side eye. So when we are first introduced to Prince Naveen, we see him hopping off the ferry boat. And the first thing homeboy does is he goes in front of a little crowd and he's playing music. This causes his little attending, I forgot his name, to literally lose his mind. Because literally the main reason why they are in New Orleans is to find that man a marriage partner and you might be asking me yo Ella why is he in New Orleans trying to find someone to marry the reason why he's in New Orleans trying to find someone to marry is because he has been doing so much nonsense that his parents cut him off and I really want you guys to put this into context right because he is a prince if you know anything about modern day royals in our real world it takes a lot a lot for them to be cut off. And then we see a little montage about how he was talking to so many girls, doing so many frivolous spending. The queen and king of Moldova had enough. So they said, you are cut off and you gotta find your own money. And the main way they said that he could find his own money is by finding someone to marry. So from the jump, we already know this dude is a scumbag. And literally, after that whole little rant that the servant had telling him that he needs to find a bride ASAP, he meets this very, very sketchy man. I'm we know him as Dr. Facilier, but Prince Naveen and his servants do not know this man from a bag of bricks. And no tea, no shade, but if you look at Dr. Facilier, something about him gives sketchy. I don't want to profile nobody, but if I saw this man and he's talking about some come with me and I just got to a new place that I didn't know anything about, personally for me, I'm minding my business and walking away from him. But Prince Naveen, he's so childish and he like... He lacks common sense that he sees this man, the sketchy, look at the picture y'all, and he follows him into a dark, dank alley and into his little workshop. And then literally, um, he's getting his fortune told, right? And personally for me, I'd be shaking in my boots. I'm shaking in my boots right now, even thinking about it. But he's literally going along with the nonsense. And I really feel like he just lacks common sense because while his fortune is talking about some, oh baby, you're going to see green, right? Dr. Facilier, or F I'm already butchering the pronunciation, he's telling his servant, you're going to get everything that you want in this life. You see how those are two different fortunes? And I really feel like if Naveen had common sense, he would have picked up on that. But he's like, oh, I'm here to, you know, marry someone. Oh, you know, that's enough. And seeing green and marrying someone, personally for me, it doesn't sound the same. But hey, 
I'm not Prince Naveen. And due to the fact that this man lacks common sense, he literally ends up turning into a frog. Because when Dr. Facilier say he's going to see green, he meant that when he looked down at his hands, he was going to see green. Because he literally got turned into a frog, right? And so literally, Tiana, she is so devastated because at the time that, you know, those two meet, the, the rich white men who own the building that she wants literally told her to her face, uh, a girl of your background is not going to get uh, the building. We have other buyers, even though they were pulling her along for so many years. So she's literally at the balcony talking about some, I wish, I wish, you know, wishing on a star. That's when she sees the frog. And this is when Naveen brings her into this nonsense by promising her that if she kisses him, he'll give her whatever she wants. And seeing as she's a poor destitute girl, she said, listen, I gotta do what I gotta do, right? She kisses him and she gets turned into a frog too, y'all. So we already see Tiana being put into situations that she has no business being because of this man. And I really feel like my good sis did not deserve that. And not only did this man bring her into the nonsense, he has the audacity to have a pretentious and rude attitude too. Like literally, she got turned into a frog because she kissed you in order to help you. And he's like, how could you not tell me you were a waitress? I thought you were an actual princess. And he literally starts disrespecting her because she's a waitress or whatever, right? And I'm literally like, she was trying to help you, bro. She was literally trying to help you. She could have squashed you, like actually squashed you like they did Ray in the later half of the movie. But she was trying to do her due diligence to help you. And he's having this big, stupid attitude like, well, I'm not actually going to help you because you're a waitress. And the gag is I don't have any money. And this is the man that's supposed to be for my good sister, Tiana? Ugh. Oh, Oh. And the main issue that I have with Prince Naveen and Tiana's relationship is that it falls into the stereotype of the strong, independent black woman with her lazy bum husband vibes. Because if you guys have watched any media that has like a black female lead, especially if it's made by a black man, like anything with uh, Tyler Perry, that's his name, right? It'll be the woman is so hardworking. She has sense. She has sense. Good job, her own house, her own bills, all that. And then she's paired with a bum. And I really feel like that's the situation that we see them in. Because literally while they're both frogs, um, Tiana, she's making like some type of stew, right, for her <laughs> her entourage at this point. Because they've gathered like Ray, um, the singing alligator, and it's Tiana and Naveen. And she's like, okay, I need you to cut this mushroom, right? I want to go gather food so we can eat. And he literally gets the small little knife thing. I don't know how they're frogs with knives. It's Disney, y'all. And he's like cutting it. Cutting it mad slow. And he already breaking the sweat. And Tiana looking at him like... Like, I know he's a prince. I know he's a spoiled prince. But if you don't take that... If you don't take that knife and do a little something, something... He breaking the sweat trying to do that little one-two, one-two cut-up situation. And I literally feel like that was so icky to see. Because I'm like, get it together. Get it together. I really feel like Tiana deserved a man who had it together. That she didn't have to practically build up. Because that is a reoccurring thing that movies will try to teach black women. And the main message that we get from a lot of these films, right, with black, black women as their leads, like, we know you are already good. And we already know that you know how to get your life together. But why can't you teach a man how to love you? Why can't you teach a man how to be a person? And I will never, 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 never be down for that because come on he's grown if tiana's grown he's grown especially since his parents cut him off he should have learned life skills as soon as the parents said no more money no more checks shaking my head it's a mess but the main reason why i have to give this movie the side eye is that after the movie progresses and tiana's practically teaching naveen how to be a person they fall in love and literally <sighs> They are too late in order to get, um, what's that girl's name, Lottie? They're too late to get Lottie to kiss Naveen in order to turn him back to a prince. And literally, <laughs> this is so messy. Tiana is literally like, it's okay. I'm going to give up on my dream of being a restaurant owner in order to stay as a frog in order to be with Naveen. And this is when I was like, oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. We've lost the plot. We've lost the plot. Because when movies try to convince me that a woman should give up her ambition to find love, something about that doesn't sit right in my spirit. Because I'm like, Tiana, 
Tiana, who's been wanting to own a restaurant since she was five years old, is ready to give up her dream, the dream that she had in order to fulfill her dad's legacy, in order to be a frog for Prince Naveen? I said, baby, we're losing the plot. We're losing it quickly. And if I hadn't rewatched the movie, I would have forgotten about that. But that, oh my goodness, we've lost the code. Because when she said that, I said, mm-mm, Dr. Facilier must have left a little something something before he got dragged into the spirit world. Because this is Tiana we're talking about. She was working 80 hour shifts a week, violating all types of codes in order to save up for this restaurant. Talking about some, yeah guys, I'm really ready to give up on all of that so I could be a frog. And mind you, if she was a frog, she wouldn't be able to do anything. She would probably have a certain lifespan. She would always have to be afraid of those hunters, those hunters in the bayou. She would always have to be worried about getting eaten by a bigger creature. Like even her uh, her best friend is an alligator. What about one day she meets an evil alligator trying to chomp chomp and kill her? She would never be able to hang out with Lottie because even though Lottie is like a nice person, give her 10 years, she would not want to be hanging out with no frog, right? She will probably never be able to hang out with her mom or the other black people in the little section of the town they were in. She, she was ready to give up on her hopes and dreams for Naveen. Naveen who put her in the situation to begin with. And that's why I feel like Tiana deserved better. Because what... What was Disney trying to say? Because if, if they didn't get married, bro, expeditiously... They would have been stuck as frogs. And I just feel like that should not have been the fate of Tiana. And that's all I have to say. Emma, thank you so much. You're so lovely. I adore having you here. But um, yeah, he, he low-key a bum. <laughs> Why did they do this to her? Why did Disney pair her up with this man? Honestly, if we're really being technical, we can talk about other trash men that Disney done paired up with their female leads. Because I'm going to be honest, Flynn Rider ain't all that great either. Ah, mm -mm. When I was younger, I used to like Flynn Rider. But now that I'm older, I'm like, yeah, I don't think I would like you. You irritate the shit out of me. And that's how I feel with Naveen. Like, Flynn and Naveen are just handsome. They're just really handsome. There's a lot of work that they need to do with themselves. I'm going to shut up now about Flynn Rider because I don't think y'all need to be coming over here misunderstanding. I don't need y'all coming in my comments talking about I misunderstood Flynn's character. I just don't give a fuck about him. Okay, trust me, I am somebody that was a big ass fan of Tangled growing up. And now that I'm older, I just kind of am over the movie. I don't necessarily care about Eugene Fitzherbert discourse. All right, thank you. But back to Naveen, he low-key a bum. I do have a video on my channel where I talk about the Almost There book that basically was a rewriting of the last fourth of the Princess and the Frog film. And I talk a bit about how Naveen's character was much more likable over there. So make sure you guys check that out. I will have that link down below. But we're not sitting here and talking about that Naveen. We're dragging the damn movie Naveen. For the most part, him and Tiana was just arguing so much in this damn movie. Like, they were just going back and forth. And at first, it was silly, cute little banter. But after a while, it just got annoying until he started to realize that he needed to respect her ass. But also, like, Naveen is the reason why she got turned into a frog in the first place. Like, I would be really, really irritated with him. Tiana had every right to be fucking mad. I don't know. Can we talk about how it feels like Tiana kind of settled for him? Like, can we please talk about that? She just felt as if he was her last resort. I'm gonna be completely honest. The way Naveen and Tiana decided they were gonna be together more so felt as if Tiana was like, all right, this is the only thing I got. I'm gonna stay with you just because of that. And it was giving the ending of Love and Basketball. Now, if you've seen Love and Basketball, this is a film that is very popular in the black community. I think it's very well done, but the movie makes me so mad because the male love interest can be such a dickhead at times. And at the end of the film, they have this bet that's like, if I win, you can't go get married. You know what? I think I'm going to settle for you because I low-key feel like I have lost a lot of shit. And that's just kind of how it feels with 
Tiana. She kind of feels like she's settled for Naveen at the end. But also, I think we need to point out how Naveen is Tiana's first boyfriend. Like, I'm just being completely fucking honest. He is her first boyfriend and she married him. So, I don't think Tiana really should have married him so fucking quickly. She needed to have a little bit more experience with dating, if you ask me. But this is like a man who has showed her interest and I'd say that he is the first dude that she has given that attention back to. Because we see in the beginning of the movie that Naveen was checking Tiana out because yeah, she bad as hell. But also in the movie, we see that other men, like there is a man that thinks that Tiana is super duper pretty on the train. It is pretty clear that a lot of people think that Tiana is gorgeous. People have mentioned to her, like her mother even said something about her, like, hey, I want some grandkids. Like, when are you gonna get married? When are you gonna get this and that and the third? And that kind of frustrates me with Tiana's character where so much of her just had something to do with her dating men and getting married and this and then the third and while yes as much as it annoyed me that's realistic for the time period it's 1920s america and even not so with 1920s america just talking to my family and you know black families especially my family's growing up this and then the third all the stories that they were telling me they were like it was low-key a priority to get married it was low-key a priority to be in a relationship it was a priority to have kids like they low-key wanted you to put your dreams aside and just go and get married but I personally feel like that was important to keep in the story because it is very truthful to the time period that this is set in. That's one thing that kind of gets on my nerves when people are talking about period pieces and whatever because they be like, I'm mad that they included this shit in here. And I was like, yeah, that's the purpose because you want to know why? I'm sick of y'all wanting stories to be told that are not realistic to this time and setting that they are in. Even though New Orleans is a black ass city, let me tell you, most black ass cities in the America have some history with racism. Not some, a lot. Listen, I live in Atlanta. I'm very aware of how anti-black this city was for the longest, even though it's black as hell currently. Hey, editing me here. I don't want you guys to think that I am like arguing against Emma's point because no, I fully agree with her. I really do think Disney could have done better with the um husband that they gave Tiana. Tiana's character is a prime example that Disney has so much to do with unpacking their massage noir. And I'm saying that it is important that they put this in the film about how it was a bit prioritized for women to, you know, get married and have kids, whatever the fuck, and put their dreams aside for a man and a family. I'm not sitting here and saying that that factor should not have been there because it should have. But also thinking about what Emma had said, why did they give her that husband? He fucking sucks. That's the issue. If they pair her up with somebody that was a bit better, then maybe we can talk. And part of the reason why I am arguing for this is because I'm like, when we look at the Disney Prince lineup, why does she end up getting that shit <laughs> compared to what the other princesses got? Like, hope This shit is honestly why I am excited for the Tiana series because I want to know more about Tiana as a person. Because we did get that shit here, but the movie kept bouncing around from person to person to person. And at one point it did bounce around to Naveen and focused on him for a bit. With this show, we really need to sit down and learn more about Tiana because I'm still not understanding why she wanted him. I'm still not getting it. For the most part, he's just pretty. Like, that's it. And Tiana has to teach him to be a better person. And I kind of don't like that. Like, he was pretty. Honestly, it just more so had to do with the fact that he was pretty, he was a man that was giving her attention, and he most definitely was the first dude that she gave that attention back to. But yeah, also, Naveen had a little sidekick, a little henchman named Lawrence, and Lawrence is the person that swaps bodies with him when they go and make the deal with Dr. Facilier, who we will talk about in a minute. Naveen is turned into a frog and Lawrence is placed into Naveen's body. He now has the appearance of Naveen, but he is still very much Lawrence just as well. And also, this is a point that I really need to bring up because I've talked about it here on my channel. I may make an entire separate video about this next year, but even though we don't like Lawrence, he is one of the villains of the story. He's more so a secondary villain. This movie probably got like five fucking villains in it, if we being honest, if you're counting racist white people. Lawrence is low-key racist to a certain extent too because of what he 
did but that's another topic for another time lawrence falls into the ongoing category of how disney likes to use bigotry when it comes to their villain characters because lawrence is fat he is pretty much like the only fat character in this movie that's human i'd say like big daddy is fat and he is like you know the positive representation of this rich white man whatever but so much of what they use Lawrence's character for it's like they're just making fun of his weight and he is just like bad guy Chun Li at the end of the day because he is he's like the fucking villain but it's just annoying with so much of how they treated this character and I was like we can show that Lawrence is a bad person but not feeling the need to like make fun of his weight and shit like that but then also we can debate that like yeah that's realistic to the time period yada 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 it's an entire thing if y'all are interested in me talking more so about how disney treated this damn character even though he's a white man and that's not really the focus of this movie comment down below i'm genuinely curious because i had an entire section written up about lauren's characters and how it is a big reflection of disney's bigotry but i just scrapped it because i was like mm, yeah no we can talk about that at another time. Let's continue. Because like I said, this video long as hell already enough. Let's move forward. I just want to go ahead and make it clear before we even get here. Like, these are characters that I don't necessarily give a fuck about. Okay? I'm not somebody that cares about these characters for the most part. The only time I cared about talking animals would have to be in Amphibia. And that's mainly because we couldn't avoid the fuckers over there. But yeah, we need to talk about the animals in this damn movie. Alright, um... Uh, Lewis and Ray. Lewis is an alligator. <laughs> Ray is a lightning bug. I think Ray has the worst song in this whole film. Like, I can't stand it. It's literally insufferable. For the most part, I think Louis is pretty likable for the most part. He's basically, like, inspired by Louis Armstrong, I'm pretty sure. His name is literally spelled the exact same way and pronounced the same, too. Okay, one thing that irritates me with the princess and the frog is that the animal part of the film helps it progress but it honestly is my least favorite part of the movie lewis has dreams of being a human he loves music he desperately wants to play in a new orleans band yeah he, he's just a talking alligator that's just it he's funny he's likable but like i said i don't necessarily care about a lot of talking animal characters unless they're scooby-doo and ray ray is like another animal that's supposed to help Tiana and Naveen get turned back into human. I just don't care about him. I just don't. I'm sorry, like the scene where he died, when I was little, I cried when he died. But now that I'm older and realize how annoying he was, I was just like, uh, yeah, I don't care. I was so happy to see like in that book, the book that continued the princess and the frog and expanded upon the story that ray wasn't gonna be in it because i just personally didn't like him all that much he's just kind of annoying for me i no i don't care this section of the video is just really short because while louis and ray are important to the story because they are mainly there to help tiana and naveen get turned back into human but louis wants to turn back into human just as well and ray is pretty much grieving over his lover evangeline I just don't care. They're important. That's pretty much all you need to know about them. But I'm gonna be completely honest. When people are talking about the princess and the frog, they're not talking about Ray and they're not talking about Lewis. They are talking about the human characters. You know, the memorable ones. I don't necessarily think either of them are memorable. Like, Louis is really only memorable because he loud. Like, he loud and he scares people. But, like, Ray. I just find him irritated. But yeah, I'm just gonna shut up now because if I just keep going and ranting, I'm just gonna keep ranting about how the talking animals of this movie really made it decline a little. But yeah, let me be quiet. Now we get into everybody's auntie. She's so sweet. She's so amazing. I love her. Is she an auntie figure? Is she a grandma figure? Is she a mama figure? I don't know, but she is a motherly figure and it fits because her name is literally Mama Odie. Now, you know how the Dr. Facilier uses magic for bad? Mama Odie, she mainly uses magic more so for good because Tiana and Naveen are basically guided to Mama Odie because they found out that she would be able to help them be turned back into humans. And for the most part, as much 
as I like Mama Odie, her sole purpose in this movie was just to get Naveen to realize that Tiana is a bad bitch and marry them in the end. Because she is the one that married them in the end. She was literally there at their wedding. She was, okay, you know, the frog wedding. There's like two different weddings in this movie. Okay, first of all, now that we done brought that shit up, do y'all not realize that the dress that we seen Tiana in Delise is like her main dress? Because she had her frog wedding and then she had her actual wedding wedding at the church. And I'm just like, we saw her more in that damn blue outfit. We saw her more in that damn white outfit. We saw her more in like her like second wedding dress, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'm pretty sure it was the same time. Her that last outfit that she wore when everybody was singing and dancing like they was in the club. Tiana's main dress is the one that we see the least <laughs> in this movie. But yeah, um, I like Mama Odie. She's so sweet. She's like a nice motherly figure. I think I'm just sad because my mom died and my auntie died. I think I'm just sad right now because y'all know my mama died and my grandma died since the panoramic hit. And yeah, um, I love her. I love her. She's so sweet. But yeah, like that's just kind of like her only purpose in the movie. And also Mama Odie didn't come in the movie until like the last third. Like yeah, I'm not even fucking joking. She doesn't make her appearance in the movie until the last third. Uh, okay, as much as I love her, her main focus in this movie is to talk some sense into Naveen's bitch ass head and marry him and Tiana. Yeah, there's just not much to say about her, I'd say, because of that. Because she came later on and she really only served like one purpose. And then once she did that, she was pretty much done. Now to wrap up the unhinged breakdown that I just fucking gave y'all. Because what exactly was that? Y'all like, Harry, what the fuck? What's going on? I don't know, you tell me. But the overall of The Princess and the Frog and why so many black women like it. Listen, um, have you guys heard about this thing? It's called misogyny, especially misogynoir when it has to do with the animation industry. There is still a big noticeable lack of black women that work in the animation industry. So let's go ahead and get that there. There are more that are slowly starting to come in. Like we see that with the Proud Family Louder and Prouder and we know that Tiana's animated series has a black showrunner who is a black woman. We love that, we adore that. I most definitely appreciate that shit. We barely are the main characters in much of anything animated. Like, when we talk about how does animation care about black women, that video that I made last summer, uh, no, the answer is most definitely not. Because you're gonna sit here and be like, oh, y'all have this show, y'all have that show, y'all have this movie, and these movies are about black girls. We be wanting more films about black women. The Princess and the Frog literally the only thing we got. Like, we have some other things. We have Chicho and Rita, and we also have Michiko and Hachin, which is an anime series. We don't really have much to choose from. The Princess and the Frog is loved and held close to heart to a lot of black women in films like me because this kind of is how we the only thing we have it really is the only thing we have and I find that fucking sad because when the princess and the frog came out I was like oh we're going to be getting more animated movies that star black women and not too long after the princess and the frog came out that is when Michiko and Hachin came out we ain't seen a much of a difference. Like, we have Hair Love, but that's more so a show that focuses on a family. We do have Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur that does take time to focus on the grandmother in the series. And I hope we get to see more of her in the future with season two. Super duper excited for that. But the Princess and the Frog, that, that's kind of like all we got. <laughs> we hold it on to their life. That's why a lot of us were so kind of irritated when we found out the Tiana series kept getting delayed. And it's more so about how we want to be more appreciated in this space because there are so many black women out here that love animation. Let's go ahead and get that straight. I always think about that thing Chris Summer said where they were like black girls don't watch cartoons and she said that's straight up BS. That most definitely is fucking BS. I am a black woman. A lot of my friends are black women and non-binary people we love cartoons we love animation we deserve to be here just like everybody else especially with other women of color too just as well especially non-black women of color who are of darker skin but as i did this revisit of the princess and a frog as an adult and this is a movie that i always reflect on every single year for some reason because for some i never run out of things to say about this shit like i still have so much to say about the princess and the frog that I haven't necessarily touched much on on my channel because I never run out of things to say about the entirety of its existence. 
I know I've been on my channel talking about how I want more adult animated movies and when I say adult animated movies I'm not sitting here talking about movies that have a whole bunch of cussing and nudity and this and that and the third lots of blood guts and gore no when people hear adult animation they tend to think of that and no please y'all y'all need to understand that adult just means for like an older audience or it could be a family movie too everybody can enjoy it the hunchback of Notre Dame in my opinion people say that that's a family movie but I personally don't think it is you know take out the gargoyles that is an adult animated movie if you just leave the gargoyle shit out it feels like a very mature story one thing that I noticed with this Princess and the Frog rewatch that I tend to do like every year because this is actually one of my comfort movies and Tiana is one of my comfort characters this felt like a grown-ass movie like it felt pretty mature until the frog shit started to happen it really did and it just goes to show you how Disney most definitely has the potential to tell stories that are for an older an audience of an adult audience because there were a lot of things with the first 30 minutes of the princess and the frog that I didn't understand when I was younger but I understood a lot more now that I'm grown I understand being a workaholic and feeling like you gotta work so hard for everything but you're just not seeing the results or when you finally get that opportunity to get something you've been working working so desperately hard for it's like yanked away from you there's so much more that I understand as an adult with this film than I do when I was younger like the entire situation that went on with Naveen I didn't realize his ass was a fucking bum when I was younger but now that I've grown I'm like ooh, I can see why your parents cut your ass off I think Disney did a pretty good job of showing the realism with the first 30 minutes of this movie I adore literally every single last human scene in this film because it just goes to show you that we can have these stories be told that are just about people of color or just adults just doing things. But at the end of the day, Disney is a company and they're gonna always gonna do what they gotta do to sell toys. Another big critique that so many people had with this film had to do with the fact that Tiana was a damn frog for three fourths of it. And yeah, we that is just a tired argument at this point. And when I say tired, I'm just like, it's not a problem that we keep bringing it up. It's just, it's been stated so many times already. And I don't want to feel like I'm just constantly rehashing takes that other people have said. So yeah, it was annoying that she was a frog for three fourths of the movie. And that shit right there is why I personally don't care if this gets a live action adaptation. I really don't. I'm more so am excited for that Tiana animated show than that and she better not turn into a fucking frog in that animated show too i feel like they're gonna find a way to do it just knowing how disney is but i want to trust the showrunner for that show she's a black woman i want to trust the writers that are going to be on that series i really do think that they are going to do tiana's character justice as much as i love the princess on the frog i love it more so for different reasons now as an adult versus what i did when i was a kid because when i was younger i loved the animal shit and i didn't necessarily care too much about the human stuff but now that i'm grown the human stuff i adore it so much it's literally more on the mature side when it comes to dance and the animation like i said this company has the potential to make an adult animated movie and i just love the human scene that's in this film that is one thing i did not expect myself to enjoy so much but i am just desperately wanting more cartoons animation overall about adults i'm just so tired of stories about adolescents i want more grown-ass stories <laughs> And the last thing that I'm going to say in this unhinged breakdown is what to expect from the Tiana series. I'm gonna be honest, I feel like us going off on Disney for years about how Princess Tiana was a frog for most of the movie is why they finally decided to do more with her character. Because one thing about black people, we gonna show up for Miss Tiana. We most definitely do. Almost all my mutuals and friends that be going to Disney World or Disneyland, they be making sure that they go and get a, a picture with Princess Tiana. I think that is like so funny and like so wholesome at the same time people have their opinions about the princess and the frog as a film overall but one thing a lot of people can agree on is that we are appreciative of princess tiana but we also want disney to do her character justice we want this company to treat her better and i personally think that they treated her better in the book that they put out called almost there which basically like i said it rewrote the last fourth of the movie and it was very well done in my opinion i do have a video about that on my channel that will be linked down below if you guys want me to 
to talk about that. I didn't really necessarily speak about it here because I just wanted this to focus on the movie. And I know that there is going to be a Tiana graphic novel that comes out in January. Same with Nicki Maxwell. No, I'm always going to be up in Princess Tiana's business. What's going on next with sis? That's my homegirl. Hi, thank you guys so much for watching this video. This has been the unhinged breakdown of the Princess and the Frog. This video was actually supposed to be done in the beginning of December, but just so much has happened and I just wanted to take my time with this one a little bit more. And I also was just on a really, really bad headspace and I just wasn't, I didn't have like the mental ability at that time period to just make a long ass video like this one going into detail explaining shit yada 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 it has been a year and 2023 has sucked the soul out of everybody okay including myself this december 2023 has concluded special thanks to my two guests in this video emma and turb their channels are ella pastoral and turb i will have both of their channels down below they both make amazing work especially when it comes to the subject of blackness in our media link to their channels will be down below yeah i told myself i wanted to do a bigger video to end out the year and i did just that i hope i did princess tiana justice all right and you guys noticed i had the none of you bonnet on on purpose for this because haha yeah 2023 has been a year lots of gains lots of losses but you know at the end of the day we're always growing we're always learning and lighter days are coming that's just what i'm gonna keep telling myself free palestine free congo free sudan remember nobody's free until we're all fucking free <sighs> merry christmas to everybody that celebrates happy new year to everybody merry whatever to whoever celebrates whatever i don't know happy hanukkah happy kwanzaa because i know that's coming up but just have a good day like i always in my videos Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all next year. I need a rest. I need a break. Y'all know at the end of December, I always take a little break from YouTube and then I come back swinging in the next year. I have a lot of fun things that I have planned. I have a lot more longer videos that I'm going to be putting out, but yeah, I need a rest. <laughs> so yeah, um, thank you guys so much for watching. And yeah, until next time, I will see y'all in 2024. Now, now that you see, you should be aware of the power of three. They come to fight as fast as they can. They're dangerous yet fabulous. Because the Utonia made them is true. They are the colors of pink, green, and blue. They'll catch you in the blink of an eye and do it all before the time. They come in through and fight, oh. and everyone they're shocking. Oh. You know, no one can stop them all because of the chemical oh. acts. They come in through and they come in.